and hello everyone welcome back to a new video all right so today we'll be talking about processes now we'll get into doing the basics first neofetch you may not have it installed if you don't you can just say sudo at get install neofetch and if i'm correct on linux it would be or in arch it would be pacman s neofetch so yeah then you can just run neofetch and it's not really to do processes but it's a nice way to like show people the system you have in my case now i can see all the details my c or my pc has here's the cpu here's the gpu here's the memory usage and let's see here's how long it's been up here's the my pc type here's my operating system bunch of things here's the shell i'm using as you can see it's bash perfect for a previous video or one of the previous videos we talked about here's how we can see where it is here's my desktop environment which is mate you might have cinnamon and here is my uh, window manager marco a window manager theme and yeah we can you can, you can go check that out yourself and then we have htop which you'll find most useful if you are someone who like to check out your processes but this is basically your task manager just in text form if you're like spend cinnamon you already have a task manager it's just not linked to control shift escape i can't remember what it's called but it's also something with monitor if i'm correct but yeah and here you can also like view the process they're running so if we were to start up firefox now this is the now this is the cpus if you have more than one cpu this would change i have only two cpus so this one has to show to you uh, this is usually not that important but that's just what your pc is running at the moment so 96 tasks with 355 fridges and two running not quite sure what that means I've... anyways load average and then how long your pc has been up this is your memory so if you have four four gigs of ram this would be four and not eight this is 7.61 but it is eight gigs uh, this is your swap memory swap is basically when you have extra when your ram gets filled up then you can use swap to store a little bit of extra memory so it's basically like in my, in my case two gigs of extra ram not as fast as ram of course but it is like a little bit of extra making my piece a little bit faster when i need it it can also be used to help your computer hibernate and stuff like that anyway so here we have uh, just normal web browser and if we look here there's Firefox so if we were to we can move around to keep it on one thing and as you can see this is the Firefox process and if you want to and you can use this here to help you move around so it just helps set up this will allow you to search filter uh, see things in a tree view sort things by the like what use the most processing power at the moment uh, niceness we will talk about that in a second and killing and that's what we're going to talk about right now so let's say you have a process that just won't that just keeps running and it's just really a bother because it's really taking up a lot of memory usage so let's say we're searching up um hello and then it's going to search up hello and we can check here and where's firefox right now here's firefox so if we were to stick our cursor on here i'm just moving around so it doesn't update then we can uh, press F9, as you can see right down here, F9, to kill this process. So if I were to go Fn, F9, and here is where you can see how you want to kill it. Most of these are unimportant. You'll mostly be working with 15 and 9. Now, in case you just want to close a process because it's just running in the background, you don't want it to take up that much memory, you can just press enter here because kill signal 15 is basically telling the program to close. Now let's say this doesn't work and the program persists on running in the background, then you can use 9 which will forcefully close the program. So it will forcefully go and rip the program out of its running point and it will kill it. Don't use 9 unless you really have to. I would recommend always using 15 unless a process just doesn't want to stop and that process is not important to your computer and you have no data you want to save or anything like that. Anyways, if I press that, as you can see, Firefox just died in the background and I killed it with 15. And yeah, that's the basics of HTOP. I don't usually like this 
way of viewing things. So I don't often use top, only if I want to monitor this. But when I want to do this, I usually use top. Now you might not have htop installed, I don't tell you about that, but sudo apt get install htop or pacman dash s htop, whatever your computer supports. And now if you want top, your computer should have top, if I'm not mistaken, basically all of them have. But you can use top to basically do the same as htop, but it's basically a little bit it is not the same as htop, you know, less, it's not as easy to read and whatnot, but it is also very useful. So if you want to change the update time, for example, you can use s, and in this case, it is 3 seconds, and I'm okay with it being 3 seconds. So every 3 seconds is going to update, you can change that by pressing s. Then you can uh, press i to view all the currently running processes. So this will harshly narrow down everything to only the things that matter the most. And this is why I like using this, because then I can see what is running and what is using the most by looking at CPU and memory usage. Now if we were to open up Firefox again, I'm oh, sorry I have to kill Firefox using every time. It's such a useful program and now I have to kill it like that. Here's Firefox. And so here it is over there, Google. And now if I press Q, the nice thing here is it stays on screen. But we'll get to why that's very useful in a second. So if we look here, then as you can see, there's Firefox. Now, okay, so it is, uh, what's this? This is really Google. Anyways, so now if you want to kill something, you can just press K and then you can press in the, the process ID which in this case is what, whatever you need. So here, let's see, where's Firefox? Firefox is right here. So process ID is 5141. So 5141. And this will automatically use signal kill 15 to try and, as you can see, to try and kill it, but you can say nine if you want. We would recommend that, but if you say 15, it will kill the process for you. So really useful, as you Good telegram as well. Now, the reason why I find this very useful, so let's actually open up Firefox again. I'm really sorry, Firefox. I'm starting to feel bad that I have to kill you each and every time. But anyways, if we start up Firefox again, and let's see, this is now Firefox new process ID. If we press Q, it's going to stop it here because it's going to stay right here. Let me restore a session just to keep it running. And as you can see, right there is where we need it. So if I'm going to press stop again, press I, and then press Q, there's Firefox. And now I know where Firefox is. Now if I wanna kill Firefox outside of this, oh, oh yeah, it's also Q to exit. But anyways, if I wanna kill Firefox outside of top, then I can use kill and either 15 and then the process name, or the not the process name, but the process ID. So Firefox is 5341. 5341 and this will kill it by signal 15. I can go kill 9. This will forcefully quit it, like forcefully like murder the process. You can also use dash kill to do um, the same as process kill 9. We can actually use 9 just to show you. So do that and it basically murdered the process. Is this operation not permitted? So I presume it went back to uh, or this process is already running, or I may have done it a little bit incorrectly. But who knows? You can use dash kill if you wanted to kill it with 9 from uh, outside of this. Or you can just use kill and the process ID and that will just kill it nicely. So let's say we open up Chrome this time. Now Chrome is a very persistent type of um, program. I don't really like it. Because if we go here to htop and we look at this, you'll see there's a lot of Chrome processes and this can make it extremely difficult to actually kill Chrome. Because if you kill this Chrome, then this process is just going to keep Chrome alive. And you can't forcefully kill it because there's other processes running keeping it alive. Now, this is why top is also nice. So we can just go like this, wait for everything to load in. There is Chrome. Now, 
if you want to kill chrome then just using kill won't kill chrome so if i go kill and let's say what's this chrome right here that's five seven one six five seven one six do that that just crashed my ad blocker it didn't kill chrome and that's quite annoying so here if we were to look at chrome right here now if we want to kill all the processes in chrome it's very difficult you can't just kill it because it's not going to work it's just going to stop things as we saw earlier so we can just say kill all chrome and that will kill all of chrome's processes and not just the few processes that are extensions of chrome and that's really a useful thing can you do all right so let's say you want to kill all the processes that's being run by a user so you're in an entire system and you need to stop some computer from running because it's using up all the processes or something like that now to do that you can just say uh, p kill dash u and then their username so if i go net so it's going to kill my entire system and we don't want that so i'm not going to do that but you can use that to uh, kill it okay now before we get to the last uh, thing i want to tell you here is the command of the day that i want to share with you guys uh, which is not part of the video but what you can do is you can actually do something such as watch and for example free now this is going to every two seconds run the uh, run free so if uh, just control c to exit so if i go dash h so it's actually readable every two seconds this is probably the thing that's going to be updated the most because you know so as you can see that updates and yeah so this is just a, a way to make a process keep running itself every few seconds this is nice for me especially when i want to uh, do something such as compile sas or typescript or even c plus plus occasionally but doing it every two seconds can sometimes slow down your pc so you can go dash in and say how many seconds in this case i'm just going to say one because it doesn't really matter to make it more but as you can see then every second this shared updates or for the most part it updates I believe i'm going to do this then it's going to change up quite a bit yep anyways and yeah that's the basics i can tell you about this if you want something to only update every 15 seconds or rerun every 15 seconds you can use 15 and this will every 15 seconds run this process so if i want to start chrome every 15 seconds i can just say chrome oh uh is it stable chrome like let's say firefox then this will boot up firefox every 15 seconds so just be careful what you run with this but for the most part it's that's what it does now let's get to the last commands or not the last commands but more like information you can skip this if you want but if you want to get deeper into linux this is a good thing to watch now let's uh, go and see htop again now right here we have a niceness value now niceness is basically how nice a program is to other programs for example let's say the uh, niceness is negative 20 or because niceness can be go between zero uh, i mean negative 20 and 20 or i think it's negative 19 and 19 one of the two but basically the less nice a program is so if it's in a negative it's going to have more it's going to be allowed to do more so it's going to be allowed privilege above other programs so let's say you have a program and it's running slightly slowly because it's not getting all the resources it needs you can use the niceness scale to give it more resources or if there's a program that's using too much resources and you don't like it you can listen it's not or you can increase its niceness so for example let's boot up chrome again so as you can see firefox is now started up and let's see where's firefox right there so here firefox is running now if we want firefox to use less resources we can actually decrease its niceness by increasing or increase its niceness so other programs have more priority than this one so to do that you can just press f8 as seen down here so there's f8 and if i'm going to stop on it i'm just going to go 
effect and as you can see its niceness is increasing the more nice you make it the less it is allowed to do so i just made it niceness of 15 so now it's not going to use as much processing power as what it as what it may use so for example hello we search for that firefox may be running a little bit slow now because it's not allowed to use a lot of processes or a lot of um, resources so it's just going to be a little bit slower than usual but yeah now if you want to change it to the other way around you can go here to uh, firefox again and uh, where is it here's firefox and you can increase its night uh, or decrease its niceness by pressing f7 so I think you have to be super user to actually decrease the niceness. So if we were to now try it again, the niceness of 15, if we may, where's Firefox? And let's just search something up again so it brings it to the top. There we go, there's Firefox. As you can see, niceness of 15, if you want to decrease it, then it's F7. And as you can see, we can increase the niceness. And the more we, I mean, decreases, the more we decrease the niceness, the probably the faster it will get. But the more you decrease the niceness, the less is available for our program. So let's actually search something up like cool, for example. And as you can see, the, the entire program is just much faster than what it was. But now it's using more resources than most of the other, or it is allowed to have more use more resources than other programs so i would recommend decreasing the niceness but i would recommend increasing it if a process is using too much so yeah, that's the basics of uh, niceness and yeah that's actually all i want to talk about with uh, processes might have been a little bit confusing but you don't have to process most of what i just said you just need to know h topics is so if you can monitor processes you can use top to do the same thing and maybe narrow it down a little bit which makes it a little bit easier and you can use neo fetch if you want some nice details about your uh, system at the moment and you can use watch to continuously run a program so yeah that's what i wanted to tell you talked about the the most today so actually yeah thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed and see you all in the next video.